we shall now develop a code to calculate the factorial of a number using recursion so just to summarize in order to calculate say the factorial of the number 5 i can follow this particular process 5 factorial is pi into 4 factorial similarly 4 factorial is 4 into 3 factorial 3 factorial is 3 into 2 factorial and 2 is 2 into 1 factorial finally 1 is itself the factorial of the number 1 so this is the flow or this is the division of the problem into simpler steps which will help me calculate the factorial of 5 first thing i need to ask is how long should i continue to find the factorial as long as the number is not equal to 1 i should keep doing this particular process so the first if condition says if number is equal to 1 simply return 1 because factorial of 1 happens to be 1 but if you see any other number other than 1 you are just seeing what is happening for example if the number is 5 what i am doing is i am saying 5 factorial is 5 into 4 factorial but at this point i do not know what is 4 factorial so the value of n now becomes 4 and comes here next time 4 factorial is what 4 into 3 factorial because 4 minus 1 is 3 next time n is 3 what is 3 factorial because 3 is not equal to 1 it is 3 into 2 factorial because 3 minus 1 is 2 so this particular iteration or recursion keeps happening till i reach the value of n equal to 1 when n is equal to 1 then what i am able to do is i am able to get the factorial of 1 once i get the factorial of 1 i can replace this 1 factorial with 1 so now i can get 2 factorial which is 2 replace this 2 factorial with 2 this becomes 6 3 factorial becomes 6 replace this 3 factorial with 6 which gives me 4 factorial which is 24 replace 4 factorial with 24 which gives me 5 factorial which is 5 into 24 which happens to be 120 so let's try to run through this or trace the recursion of this particular factorial problem to really understand how the factorial calculation happens through recursion let us say i'm interested to find the factorial of the number 5 so i call the function fact of 5 so in main i am calling fact of 5 all right so that is the first step we are trying to do once i call fact of 5 the value of n is 5 so this is as good as saying fact of 5 since n is 5 5 is equal to 1 is false i am going to come here so i am going to come to the return so let's say what the return is saying the return says n into n minus 1 so it is 5 into fact of 4 now next time i am this 5 is solved but the fact of 4 i have not yet found out so i go back here n is 4 so 4 equal to 1 false here again now i come back to the return so it is 4 into factorial of 3 now i do not still know what is factorial of 3 i have to calculate it so i go back here because i am calling this function fact so what happens is n is 3 3 is not equal to 1 so i come here so 3 factorial is 3 into factorial of 2 still i do not know what is 2 factorial so what i do is i again pass this 2 to this particular function n becomes 2 when n is 2 i am saying return 2 into factorial of 2 minus 1 which is 1 factorial next time when fact is called with 1 i come here n is 1 1 is equal to 1 this is true so what is going to happen here is 1 is going to be returned now this is very important since i am able to get the factorial of 1 as 1 now it is very easy because what i am doing is i am able to replace this with 1 because i know the factorial of 1 is 1 so factorial of 2 now happens to be 2 now since i know factorial of 2 is 2 i can replace this fellow with 2 so here what is happening i am replacing 3 with 2 because i know factorial of 2 is 2 then factorial of 3 happens to be 6 because i have already got 2 2 into 3 is 6 
Now I can replace factorial of 3 with 6 because I already know the factorial of 3. So I go here factorial of 3 is 4 into 6 happens to be 24. So factorial of 4 is 24. Now I know factorial of 4 so I can replace this factorial of 4 with this factorial this return statement which happens to be 24. So now what happens is it becomes 5 into 24. When I come here I already know factorial of 4 so 5 into 24 is 120. This is how I am able to calculate the factorial of the number 5. So this recursion trace is really important if you are able to follow it it is really easy. Now what I will do is in order to enhance your understanding I shall also show you solution of this problem using the call stack. That way it will help you get a better deal. Let us say main first calls in fact of 5. That is our problem. Main calls in fact of 5. Then what happens? Okay, I think I should take this paper this side for better clarity. If you see here, main is calling fact of 5. So the main activation record or the stack frame goes here. Now what happens is, now fact is being called with the parameter 5. So what happens here is since n is 5, this condition is false so I come here. So fact 5 when I enter, my call is going to be like this. I am entering fact, fact 5 with, with a call like this. This is fact 5 and you see the statement. I am executing this statement return 5 into fact of 4 but the value of n when I entered this particular function was n was 5. It is really important to understand that for each of these frame which is going to be built a different copy of the factorial is getting executed. It is not this same function with the same variables. Here n is 5. Now with n as 5 into factorial of 4 now I am calling factorial of 4. So let us see what happens when I call factorial of 4. So when I call factorial of 4 you can see that the value of n is 4. 4 is equal to 1 is false so I am coming to this return. So it is 4 into factorial of 3. Now I do not know factorial of 3 so I am calling this factorial of 3 function. So when I call factorial of 3 function you can see the function on the left side here. I am calling it with n value 3. So factorial of 3 is 3 into factorial of 2. I again do not know what is factorial of 2. So I again go ahead and I invoke factorial of 2 with the value of n as 2. 2 equal to 1 is false so I am returning 2 into factorial of 1. I still do not know what is factorial of 1 so I call the function factorial of 1 with 1. When I call factorial of 1 with 1 an interesting thing happens. 1 is equal to 1. So a return happens. Now since a return happens, now you will see what all is happening. In this column, I am showing you the sequence how functions are being called with different values. So now it's very important to understand the value of n in each of the activation frame is different. So you can think as this as one copy of factorial, second copy of factorial, third copy of factorial, fourth copy of factorial, fifth copy of factorial. So now since I have got n is equal to 1, I have calculated factorial of 1. So I can pop this out of the stack. Since I pop this fellow out of the stack, I have got 2 into 1 because I know this is 2, factorial of 1 is 1. Now since factorial of 2 is 2, I have calculated that I can pop this fellow. When I pop this fellow, I know factorial of 2 is 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. Now factorial of 3 can be calculated because I know factorial of 2. So 3 into 2 is 6. Since the data is completely calculated or this function has completed executing, factorial 2 has completed executing, I can pop this fellow also out. Now, since I have already calculated factorial of 3 as 6, this calculation is also done. So here I will substitute with 6, 4 into 6 is 24. So I am able to return this value. I am able to return factorial of 4. Now next what happens is, since I know factorial of 4 happens to be 24, I can replace this fact of 4 with 24. 5 into 24 happens to be 120. Now this complete return can be executed and therefore this record can be popped out. Once this record is popped out, the return value of 120 will come back to main. This is how you should be able to understand how the 
recursion trace of factorial works as well as how the stack gets built when the factorial function is called.